I've never been as lost in the world, truly lost, as our first guest. Jeff felt completely lost when his girlfriend walked out on him. And even though he was surrounded by millions of people living in New York City, he felt like the loneliest person in the world. So he did something very unexpected. Roll it. I wanted to marry this woman, have children with her. I thought that I'd found someone. And one day she walked out and I was completely devastated. I found myself alone on this island of millions of people. I kept seeing these flyers, you know, like dog walker, house movers. And I go, I'm going to put a flyer up with my phone number. And I wrote, if anyone wants to talk about anything, call me. Jeff, one lonely guy, thought if I was lucky, I might make one friend. I posted flyers all over New York City. And what happened next completely blew my mind. So this story really cracked me up. Wait, okay. What I love is you were reaching for your phone. Because, and that's part of this. So he put a flyer up. Tell me the inspiration. You, you put a flyer up with your phone number and said, if you're lonely, give me a buzz. Absolutely. I went through a tough breakup in New York City, the worst I've ever been. I was devastated. New York can be a very difficult place to meet people. People are busy. There's a lot of stuff going on. Who are you on. talking to? Who the audience. The audience. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to sit here. Okay. Hold on. Go ahead. Awesome. Go ahead. No, so I went through this incredible breakup. <laughs> No, so I was devastated and wanted to just meet people however I could. I wanted to just talk to people. I wanted to hear a voice. I didn't want to go into a chat room. So I was walking one day, as low as I'd ever been. I kept seeing little street flyers on telephone poles around New York City that said, like, dog walker, house mover. And I go, you know what? I'm just going to put my phone number up with a simple message. And if I could make one friend, I'd be the happiest guy in the world. I just wanted to talk to someone. You know, like I said, I didn't know very many people in New York. All of a sudden, within a day, New Yorkers were calling in overwhelming numbers. Then New Yorkers took photos. Hold on, slow down for a second. Pull that phone out because it was it was it's such a part of your life that you were actually almost like checking it as, as the tape was rolling. Just set, I was it, just set it down here. So I just got a text right there. This is from um, international number about here's a call from two one three. I'll I'll take it really quick and tell them I'll call them back. Hey, how are you? Yeah. Okay, okay, well, I'm busy right now talking to a group of great people. You know, we're trying to communicate well, and so I'll call you right back. I got your number saved. Okay, bye. No, so... So to be clear, you started this because you were lonely, and you, you broke up, you had a breakup, and then what happened is you found that people started calling you for all sorts of reasons. I mean, I found that people... I was a cynic going into this. People want to help one another i had no idea you know i said maybe one person's going to call me and it might be crazy but people from all over the world began to call me you know tell me their stories of relationship loss hey jeff you can get through the relationship this way you need to go out there just meet people did that blow your mind that people were reaching out and talking to you to help you it did i mean i'm still in this bubble 10 months later well, i can't believe see another call right here 251 <laughs> i mean you can't believe it. people care they want to help and that's the inspiring thing about this flyer is a little thing like that can transform the world you know i'm very fortunate and it's given me another like center to know that you know right now i have my arms and my legs i have a responsibility to help people now people have helped me i want to help people and i challenge you in the audience to go out and help someone who needs it there are a lot of people out there i found who need help and you we are can on help fire them. no we i love true. it it's true um, jeff how many, in the 10 months you've been doing this, roughly how many calls or texts have you, have you got? I've had over 80,000 calls, texts, and emails. I mean, it's just global. And, you know, someone from China one second, then someone from Nebraska. What's alone. the craziest, what are the crazy extremes of people who call you? I've had, this is really ominous and strange, but it's unbelievable. Prisoners call doing life or telling me, you got to get out and, and meet people, Jeff. You know, I went through a bad breakup. I got in trouble. Don't make the mistakes wow. I did. How do they find that number? 
they can watch TV. It, it was on a couple of shows or whatever, and so they just wrote the number down. What about dates? You started this because you had ended a relationship. Have you met any women? I have. In New York, I've gone out with probably six or seven different people. You know, they just call. We get to know each other over the phone and then go out. Some of them worked really well, but... In my last relationship, the breakup, I learned that I have to fix a lot of my issues before I can be a great partner. So I'm working on that now. So I'm dating, but I don't want to go to that next level because I want to make sure I don't make the same mistakes I did last time. Have you changed? Because you, you sound a bit like a therapist. I mean... People have said I'm like a confession booth, a sex therapist, relationship counselor, parole officer. So yeah, I became that. But the one thing that's amazing that people say to me is, Jeff, we know you're not a trained therapist, but the way you help me, Jeff, is you're an ear. I just want to vent to you. I want to tell you things I can't tell my family and my friends. So that's the best compliment I take away from this. And then I just know I have a responsibility. A gift was given to me, and I have to turn that around and help people. And that's why I challenge everyone in this audience to go out and help someone. You guys have good minds. Go help someone who doesn't have that gift and, you know, who can't walk. We have a responsibility. It's no longer me, me, me. It should be us, us, us. Have you talked to your girlfriend about this? She knows about it, and we wish each other well. And Your like, ex-girlfriend. Yeah, you know, I made mistakes. I have to live with it. I wanted to marry this woman, and now I'm paying for it, but I'm learning, and I won't make the same mistakes. So, you know, I've learned, and yeah, she, she's happy. We both wish each other the best. One of the, one of the things that really got me interested in this story was there are people you have helped quite a bit that you have never met. Many of them, I mean, it's just a phone conversation at night or text or email, you know. People want to just talk to someone. That's what I found. It's a lonely world. And a guy in Saudi Arabia said it best. You can be lonely in the desert or in Times Square. And he's absolutely right. Everyone's been there. It's identifiable. So I hope more people can go out and meet each other and drop this absurd stigma of loneliness. In America, if you're lonely, you're a loser. That's not the case. Everyone's been there. I hope everyone can really think about that. We've all been lonely. Let's help each other. There is somebody in this audience that you've helped quite a bit, so much so that they really wanted to meet you in person. You have no idea who they are, but you're about to find out. Just to be able to say what you're feeling to another human being who you know is taking a little of that burden from you because they know too now, it's not just you alone anymore. I mean, you could just see a uh, missed call was 13. I mean, we're a lonely world. People want to talk. It really. All right. So there is somebody in this audience that you've helped quite a bit, so much so that they really wanted to meet you in person. <laughs> they are out in this audience. You have no idea who they are, but you're about to find out. Sarah, come on down. Now, do you, Sarah, have a seat. Do you even know who this is at this point? I don't know her face, and I've met like 4,000 Sarahs, but I'm, I need to get some context. Okay, let, let's play a game. Give him some clues, and, and let's see how long it takes him to figure out. Um, I'm from Oklahoma. Okay. It's going to take I, more than that. I study interpersonal communications. I, too, was lost in my life and didn't know where I was going. And um, it was probably about April. I read your book, and I was very intrigued by it, being a communication scholar. Oh, now I know. Can I talk about your issue or yeah, not? Yes, absolutely. So you uh, know. What just clued you in? Just, I mean, it's a powerful story, and it's, it's, 
sad, but she's overcome something where she, um, she's one of the main things she wants in her life is to have children and she can't have it. And she came to me, I remember, and wrote me like 400 texts that were very in depth about everything and how she tried and how she's learned to live with it and she's going to overcome it and accept it and move on. I was incredibly moved by that. Wow. What was it, Sarah, that, that had you reach out with something so powerful to Jeff? I should point out, you wrote a book. Right. About this experience. Yeah. It was called Jeff, One Lonely Guy. Yes. And I read the book. And as I said, I study communication. So I was just intrigued by it. And I didn't know at the time texting him that I, too, was looking for somebody to tell my secret to. Someone that would listen to what I had to say and not be emotionally involved. But you knew. You knew. I did kind of know. Yeah. You just didn't want. You just wasn't out yet. Yeah, it wasn't out yet. I just, I, you know, he he asked questions and he got involved and was inquisitive about what it was that I had on what my was your, What was your story that was weighing you down? I had just experienced my fourth pregnancy loss and I have wanted to be a mom my whole life and I was coming to the realization that everything I did in my life was to be a mom and now I wasn't sure that was going to happen. So I was lost with who I was and what I was doing in life. And could you not talk to your husband? He worries so much about me that I didn't want him to feel the pain that I was feeling to the extent I was feeling it because I knew he needed to take care of himself. So you reach out to this guy who wrote this book. Yes. And he picks up. I texted, yeah, and he responds. So it's crazy, isn't it? That you, it just, you don't know who he is. It's not like he's charging you for this. Correct. This is just one human to another. Yeah. And when, how fast did you feel safe enough to share? I remember her text when she would ask me, like, or she said something about, like, you asked better f questions than my friends, and she could tell that I was, like, an anonymous. So I, I probed her and just got right yeah. to it. I'm not going to foot around it and, like, I just want to ask her point blank, and I think she sent some, said something like, you know, um, yeah, that you ask good yeah. questions, you're interested in me, and, you know, my friends won't go there or something. Yeah, your friends just tell you what you want to hear, and a stranger who didn't even mean to helped you open up to a point where you could start healing, and it was just And what really was amazing. the healing? How did Jeff help you? Just to be able to say it, you know, just to be able to say what you're feeling to another human being who you know is taking a little of that burden from you because they know too now. It's not just you alone anymore. Who here is touched by this story? Pop <laughs> up here. This is a crazy story, right? Yes. yes. Tell me, what, what are you taking from this? If I told you this was a, an idea for a movie, you'd say, ah, I don't know, it seems a little huh. unrealistic. No, I think it's a great idea for a movie because it's it's it sounds unrealistic, but it it, it also is something that you know somebody that f came from a real problem and something real and what do that you happened. connect? What do you connect to about Jeff? Is it that it started with something real? Yeah, something real that you know, and then he he made his problem into something that he can help other people, and then he made it his problem into a positive thing to help others. You ever been lonely? Yeah, I know what it feels like to um, be in a city with a lot of people and, and feel and feel that like I felt that before. Wow, you oh. just got lonely. Oh, <laughs> thanks for sharing. So it's it's kind of crazy to me that this happens so effortlessly. A random woman in the audience stands up, connects with you, and then ask her if she's lonely and you felt lonely. All right, I'm just curious now. Brian, get a big shot of the house. How many people in here are, are honest enough to raise their hand and say, yes, at some point in my life, I felt lonely? Wow. Wow. It's, it's, almost, it's, it's almost every single person in here. It blows my mind. I'm not kidding. I would have thought I would have never predicted that. But you know this. No, and it crosses boundaries. I've had stockbrokers call me, executives, and I've had elderly, homeless people. Everyone's been lonely. It crosses every line of everything you would ever think. It's a human condition, but we can make it better, you know, with vent lines like this. This was an accident, but it works and it's helped people. Obviously, it touched Sarah. I want to touch other people. I hope 
Other people can do this and might put their phone out there or get more phone lines. People need it and it would make the world a better place. I, I think you're right and I also think you're a special guy. Wow, he's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. Okay, good. Great find.